Last year, there were three local teams who made it to the state finals. Tonight, four had a chance to advance. Yeah, Cole Pepper's with us. Really some thrilling games for the local teams tonight. It really was. I mean, we had some fantastic finishes. There's no doubt about that. Let's start with last year's champs in 3A, Trinity Christian. This season, the Conquerors were reclassified into 2A, but their schedule was just as tough as ever. And the postseason, that really pays dividends because in two playoff games before tonight, Trinity had scored 83 points. Tonight, they faced Orlando Christian Prep, a school that made a name for themselves by winning two of the past three championships in the Sunshine, uh, Sunshine State Athletic Conference. Of course, Trinity is a whole another challenge to Orlando. We go after missing last week's game. Berlin Dormany back on the sidelines for the Conquerors. But Orlando Christian Prep drew first blood. Vile Nakun rolls right, fires downfield. It's tipped and into the hands of Nick Rawls. Sometimes better to be lucky than good. 57-yard touchdown puts the Warriors up 6-0. The Conquerors respond on their first drive. Colin Hurley airs it out to Xander Ross. Nice catch there. Moves the chains and leads to one of three first-half field goals for Trinity. Orlando Christian, however, kept finding the end zone. Nakun zips one over the middle to Demarion Jenkins. He is gone. 54 yards for the touchdown. Warriors up 14 to 6. Just before the half, it's Nakun calling his own number. And this is a touchdown for OCP. They led 21 9 at the half, but Trinity came back to take a second half lead, then had a fourth and goal stop at the one, followed by a 99 yard touchdown run. Trinity Christian heading to the state finals with a 29-21 win over Orlando Christian Prep to play in the finals Thursday against Champignat Catholic. In three seasons at Bulls, head coach Matt Toblin has twice gone to the state finals, and tonight they were one win away from a third straight trip to the finals, but there was a big challenge. The 4A semifinals where the Bulldogs were facing a Coco team that only lost once all season. That was by one point to an 8A powerhouse in, uh, earlier in the year. Bulls would have their... Uh, have to play one of their best games of the season in order to have a chance. To Coco, we go. Bulldogs trying to win a state semifinal for the 20th straight time. Things started well, well for the Bulldogs. First quarter, Cade Frew, take that everybody, went to the left and in for the touchdown. 7-0 lead for the Bulldogs. Later in the second quarter, Bulls up 10-0. little sleight of hands from quarterback D.J. Moore. Fakes the handoff and throws. Beautiful pass to Connor Cox all alone. 29-yard touchdown. Bulls led 17-0 with five minutes left before halftime. But Coco didn't wilt. The Tigers respond to the next possession. Davin Widener to Dante Cook. Coco on the board, 17-7. After Bulls recovered a muff punt, they turned the Coco mistake into points. Frew up the middle, second touchdown of the game. Bulls leads 24-7 with a minute 34 to play before halftime. The Bulls defense showed up to tonight as well late in the half. Watch Bradley Mann just keep working for the sack. That kept Coco out of the end zone for the moment. Then fourth down in the final seconds of the half. And watch the defense here by Grayson Ambrose, who says, no, sir. Bulldogs led 24-7 at the half. But in the second half, Coco mounted a furious comeback. O.J. Ross, who came into the game with 34 touchdowns. Does he break the plane here? They say yes. The ball popped out, but they say touchdown. PAT is missed. Bulls lead it 24-13. After another Coco touchdown, and a two-point conversion. Bulls lead is down to three heading to the fourth quarter. And in the fourth, the Tigers break through. Ross fights his way up the middle. Coco leads for the first time, 28-24, with 10.39 to play. And Coco goes on to the 35-24 win with a huge second half. Bulls loses in the state semis for the first time in the last 20 visits. Baker County had a tough assignment. Not only did the Wildcats have to face Miami Central, they had to travel five and a half hours by bus to get there. And Central... By the way, 10-2 and two coming into tonight. They started the season with losses to National Powers John Bosco out of California and Las Vegas-based Bishop Gorman. Since then, 10 straight wins, including knocking out the defending state 5A champs Plantation American Heritage a couple of weeks ago. Baker County came in on an eight-game winning streak, but this would be the toughest matchup of the year for the Wildcats, and it showed on the scoreboard. Miami Central wins it 54-21. Jamod Ruiz had a touchdown catch. Jamarian Baker with a touchdown run for the Wildcats who end the season 11-3. and three. Tough way to go, but great season for the Wildcats overall. Just ran into a buzzsaw in South Florida. The only Georgia team in our area still alive, Pierce County. They were also the only local team with a home game tonight. The Bears came into tonight's matchup with Carver on a seven-game winning streak that included four shutouts in their last five games. With the Bears defense have another big night, take it on a Carver team on an eight-game winning streak. To Blackshear we go. Pierce had the fireworks working early on, trying to continue them 
On the first drive, Pierce moves downfield to the Carver three, and on fourth and goal from the three, quarterback D.J. Bell takes the run, throws, and it's off the hands of Knox Bennett, Stetson Bennett's little brother. Carver holds, no score. Carver responds. Watch big Quintavious Lockett, all 230 pounds of him. That's what we call rumbling. Busts through the line for a 45-yard run to the Pierce 15-yard line. Two plays later, from five yards out, give it to the big fella. This time up the middle, rolls into the end zone. 6-0 Carver after a, mixed e a missed extra point. Second quarter now, Carver leads 12-3. Bell, who averages 200 yards rushing per game, fumbles. Carver recovers at the Pierce 37. Five plays later, it's Lockett at it again. He fumbles at the two. Carver led it 19-3, but Pierce fought back. Down eight in the final two minutes, Bell Calls his own number, takes it around left end, and he's in with a minute 49 to play. It's a two-point ball game, and the two-point conversion to tie. Basically the same play, but this time Bell has stopped at the one. Pierce County season is over with a 19-17 loss to Carver.